Carol from Hummingbird Spot here to talk to you about yellow jackets. Oh. Um, I had a house that was halfway between Reno and Incline Village in the Sierra Nevadas near Lake Tahoe. And our house was on six acres and it was backed up to a hundred acres of government land. And this land was pretty much undisturbed and untouched, and it was full of yellow jacket nests. The first year we moved there, I tried to have a picnic outside, and it was impossible because <laughs> the yellow jackets found the food and I had to fight for it. Well, it turns out that this problem is pretty easy to solve. Winter is when the queens are burrowed under the ground in old like rodent holes. They, they winter in old tree stumps, wherever they can keep in a place where they don't freeze. And in the spring, when the ground first starts to thaw and the snow starts to melt, that's when they come out and they start looking for a place to build their nests. Now, this is the time to solve your yellow jacket problem. Because if you can catch the queens, then you have no nest. This is a yellow jacket trap. You've all seen these. Inside, there's a little well and you put an attractant, which is a pheromone, like a hormone that attracts them. They crawl in here, they crawl out the top, and then they're trapped inside, they can't get out. That first year, oh God, I must have trapped thousands of them in these things. I had these traps all over the property. In fact, I used to feel sorry for them because they would crawl in, they can't get out, and it would take them a long time to die. So I used, when I used to get a couple in there, I used to take the trap down and put them in the freezer so they would die quickly, and then I would just dump them out in the trash. The yellow jacket trap also catches the queens, but you have to hang it out early. In fact, this is the end of March, if you're in a cold area, you should have these things hanging out now. The first year that I hung a trap out, the end of March, when the snow was just starting to disappear from the ground, I caught 16 queens. Now the queens are very easy to identify because they're bigger than the workers, they have a more yellow abdomen, and they don't have a stinger. They have this area on the end that you can see that's where the eggs come out when they're laying eggs. They also have two sets of wings. So they look really different and it's really obvious when you have a queen. But catching 16 queens meant 16 nests that weren't built. Uh, then the next summer, I would go outside, bring food outside, and I would rarely see a yellow jacket. So if you want to get rid of your yellow jackets, now, the end of March, beginning of April, is the time to start hanging these traps out. Now I do have to add that they are part of the ecosystem and they do have a positive effect on it. Uh, they feed their young, the liquefied remains of caterpillars and flies and other insects that we really don't want around. But sometimes when yellow jackets are left unchecked, um, they're really hard to coexist with. Now, if you have a nest that's very close to your property and you have children that stumble upon the nest, it's really bad news because yellow jackets are aggressive. They're not like honeybees. Honeybees won't sting you unless you accidentally touch them. They don't chase you, but yellow jackets will chase you and they're pretty aggressive. So if you have a nest they'll, and you accidentally step in the nest, they're all going to come out and sting you. Now, if you look up yellow jackets on the internet, you find tons of information on how to get rid of the nests. I mean, people pour gasoline down their nests and do all kinds of things to try to get rid of them. Well, it seems to me to be a lot simpler to prevent the nest from being built in the first place. So if you catch the queens, you have no nest. Here's Carol and my resident bird expert, Phil Moore. 
signing out. Bye-bye.